Welcome back to the Schwab Network. Our next guest wants to help you live a stress-free financial life. Jared Dillon is back with us. Investment strategist at Malden Economics, publisher of the Daily Dirt Nap newsletter, and recently the author of No Worries, How to Live a Stress-Free Financial Life. Uh, new book, Jared. Welcome back to the show and congratulations. Hey, thanks. Yeah, the book's going crazy. Yeah, I saw you're uh, uh, crushing it on Amazon. It's like almost every review is five stars. This thing must be a beast. What, what, tell us about it. Uh, this book is the culmination of really five years worth of work into personal finance. I had a radio show from 2019 to 2021, and it was a call-in radio show, and I got to hear from lots of people, and they had similar kinds of problems. And what I found is that people were experiencing financial stress. And I broke it down into two areas. Financial stress is caused by debt and it's caused by risk. Debt is pretty self-explanatory. Risk is risk in the financial markets. If you don't have any debt or you minimize your debt and you minimize your risk, you really don't have any financial stress. Mm, I like that because I was thinking, okay, well, how do you write to a broad audience, you know, and kind of address various problems with uh, you know one subject, you can't quite hit like a uh, you know one size fits all. But I like the way you break that down because that helps kind of normalize it. Let's maybe start uh, with the risk side since uh, we like to talk markets here. Where do you know most people find risk in markets? Where are they over levered or in risky stuff, speculative assets? What is it? Well, the conventional wisdom is is that you know for a lot of investors is that you should put all of your money in an S&P 500 index fund, and you should ride out the ups and downs, and you'll retire with like $8 million or something like that. And the problem with that is, if you invest in an index, you get the returns of the index, which are really good, but you also get the volatility of the index. And the S&P can move around easily 15 or 20% a year, sometimes more, which causes you a lot of stress. So the question is, even if you had the ability to ride out the ups and downs, is that something that you really want to do? Do you want to go through a 40-year investing career taking 20% drawdowns, 30% drawdowns, 40% drawdowns, and experiencing all that stress when there is a better way? Mm. And uh, how much of that needs like a portfolio structure? Do you get into specifics on portfolio construction in the book? Yes, absolutely. So I, I invented something called the awesome portfolio, which is 20% stocks, bonds, cash, gold, and real estate, and it's rebalanced annually. And this portfolio, you don't trade off much in the way of returns. It returns about 8.1% over the last 50 years versus 9% for the stock market. But your max drawdown over the last 15 years is 12%, mm. and it has half the volatility of an 80-20 portfolio. So that's the key, right, is that most people get stressed by the drawdowns and end up making decisions they regret later on. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so trying to minimize that, I like that. Uh, all right, on the debt side, I mean, what can people do, uh, not to give like the whole secret sauce away from the book here, but what can people do if they're already in? I feel like the debt situation a lot of times is already like sunk costs in a way, you know, people find themselves with the student loan debt or whatever it may be. Well, a lot of people have read this book, you know, and they're contemporaries of mine. They're in their 40s or 50s, and they say, gee, you know, I've already made a lot of mistakes with debt. How do I get out of it? And a lot of people, when they approach this, they try to undergo austerity. They try to cut expenses as much as they can. Mm. But there's a limited amount that you can do with that. So what a lot of personal finance books don't do is tell people to make more money. There's a lot of things you can do to make more money. You can get a raise, you can change careers, you can get another job, you can work a second job, you can start a business, you can do passive income. But the solution to getting out of debt usually isn't to cut expenses to the bone, it's to actually increase the revenue side, not the expense side, the revenue side and make more money. Love that. All right. Uh, a take control uh, standpoint. The other thing that stands out to me in some of the notes uh, from your book is that you talk about an abundance mindset, which uh, in your book you aim to purge the urge 
to splurge so that, that I like this. This almost sounds like you're, you're, uh, you've got a therapy section in here. <laughs> the whole book is really a therapy session. So um, it's really uh, most personal finance books or personal finance experts will tell you that it's a million small decisions that determine, that determine if you have money. For example, when I drive to work every morning, I buy a coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. It costs $3.80. And they say, if you give up the coffee every day for a year, that's 900 bucks. If you do that for 40 years, that's $36,000. If you give up coffee for the rest of your life, you'll have $36,000. But if I make one decision, if I get a house that's 500 square feet smaller than I would have, that will save me $120,000 in interest over the life of that mortgage. So people can give up large luxuries. They can live in a smaller house. They can drive a cheaper car, but they find it very hard to give up small luxuries. They can't give up the coffee in the morning. It's too hard. <laughs> I like that. All right. So uh, there's more to fixing our uh, financial situation and state of mind than not ordering lattes we can find a way to still get our latte no absolutely to get the latte like it's <laughs> totally fine like it's <laughs> i mean there's big decisions and small decisions you know a latte is a small thing uh getting a to going on a vacation that costs 10 or twenty thousand dollars is a big thing um you know buying uh some expensive food at the grocery store is a small thing but going to a college that is going to cost you $80,000 a year is a big thing. Mm. The little things don't matter. It's the big things that matter, which is contrary to what we are taught in America. In America, we are taught that the little things matter, that if you make your bed in the morning, then you will have a great day. You don't have to make your bed. Like that's, <laughs> I don't make my bed and I have a great, I, I have a terrific day. It's not the little things. All right. Uh, well, I will say, you seem like a pretty stress-free guy, so I believe in the title of the book. Definitely will check it out. Thanks, Jared, for your time. Thank you. All right. Sure thing, Jared Dillon. All right. And uh, the book right now, I'm looking at it right now, No Worries, How to Live a Stress-Free Financial Life. 283 ratings on Amazon with a 4.9. Pretty darn good start for the first couple of weeks.